Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me around the fireside tonight. My name is Joe, and I'm here to tell you a story. A story about a little balloon with big dreams. A story that shows us that there is no telling where we may end up if we only let the wind take us there. Presenting The Little Lost Balloon by Michael Burke. This book is free to read on Google Books. There is a link in the show description. I'd like to thank the author for allowing me to read this lovely little story. As always, please don't forget to like, rate or review Tales by the Fireside. Every interaction truly does mean the world to this channel. Now please, get comfortable, let go of the daylight and join me for our story. The Little Lost Balloon by Michael Burke I love all things balloon. Don't you? Well then, I have just the story for you. Once, there was a little blue balloon. We'll call him Blue. Outside the main gate of the Fall County Fair, amongst a giant bundle of purple and yellow balloons, he was the smallest one of the bunch. He didn't mind being different, being unnoticed. This suited him just fine. It left plenty of time to watch roller coasters and just daydream. He liked watching people laugh and make funny faces as they were flung high in the air. His favourite thing of all was watching the sky change its colours just as the sun was setting. It would not be a falsehood for me to say he was a happy little fellow. His only worry was that of the wind. The wind is a terrible thing, he often thought. He had seen it do many awful things, knocking over garbage cans, stealing ladies' hats, and sometimes carrying off helpless balloons. Our story begins one starry night, seemingly like any other, when Blue had a very new thought. What wonders lay beyond the trees, far beyond the fair? And just like that, in one tiny moment, the thought became a wish. Beneath the familiar lights of his home, Blue drifted off to sleep and had a most unusual dream of a faraway land. He saw thousands of balloons in the sky every size, shape and colour. He dreamt of a great balloon city. When the sun rose the next morning, our poor little friend awoke to a great big thud. Blue had bumped into a barn. He watched from above as it grew smaller and smaller and smaller still. He couldn't believe his eyes. He was lost. He had drifted away from home and was floating up high into the sky. Oh no, he thought in a panic. He couldn't stop. However, the wind was gentle. Soon, his fears faded away and Blue began to notice how wonderfully different everything was. He could see the whole county from above. He could see farms and cornfields vast forests and long twisting rivers. Blue floated along, quite content. However, he was completely unaware of the flock of geese that was rapidly coming up behind him. How could he know? Being a balloon, he hasn't any ears. Did I mention they were flying very fast? Blue soon discovered his dilemma and was now being blown about, engulfed in a wave of wind and feathers. Our little friend was now part of a great aerial ballet. 
He had seen geese before, but never this up close and personal. The graceful birds found Blue quite fascinating and took great care not to harm him. Thousands of Canadian geese fluttered around him. One bird grabbed his string and took him for a dance. Oh, how fun, Blue thought. Another goose grabbed his string and also took him for a spin. And then another and another until soon he became incredibly dizzy. Finally, his string was let go and off he went. As he watched them fly off, he thought to himself, What a lucky balloon I am. Then, Blue noticed something very strange. Everything around him became covered in darkness. A shadowy circle below was getting bigger and bigger with each passing moment. Something was directly above him. Something very large. Blue was caught in its wake. He bobbed up and down helplessly beneath its underbelly. The giant creature let out a great big sigh and blew the poor little fellow straight up and over the top. And just like that, he was free again. Now he could see it clearly. It was the biggest balloon he had ever seen in the shape of a whale. We'll call him Big B. Blue quickly realised he had seen this balloon before in his dream. Though still in awe, he was no longer afraid. As he watched it glide by, he hadn't even noticed his string was snagged on the end of its great big tail. He felt a sudden tug. He was now being dragged behind at incredible speeds. It was fun. Brilliant white sparkles danced all about. What wonderful magic, he thought in amazement. You see, Big B was carrying a basket full of people, and the bright sparkles were in fact flashing cameras, snapping photo after photo of the little balloon being dragged behind the giant air balloon. Eventually, the string came loose, and Blue found himself drifting off once again. He watched as Big B grew further and further away. Blue never had such adventures. He grew excited at the thought of what lay next. Things below were now getting larger. Blue was floating downward to the edge of a long winding river. He was completely mesmerised by the sparkling water. More magic, he thought. He poked along the river happily in a daze. Suddenly, he found himself hooked on the knot of an old floating log. This string is becoming quite a bother, he thought. The log was now zipping along the river, water bubbling and splashing all around. Blue was helpless to break free. He soon realised he was being pulled downstream towards a monstrous waterfall. He was both frightened and excited. Plunging faster and faster, he only had one thought, and that thought was, Woohoo! As fast as he had dropped all the way to the bottom, the falls tossed him back up and out, and off on his way. No worse for wear. To say Blue was happy would be an understatement. Watching people go on roller coasters every day, he finally got to feel what it was like. What fun! But... Once is enough, I think, he concluded. Worn out from all the excitement, he hitched a ride on a nice, gentle breeze. I am glad the wind is good for something, he thought, falling fast asleep. Blue slept for what seemed like forever, until suddenly jostled by something whizzing right past him. He awoke to an incredible sight. A sky full of kites. Once again, that mischievous wind came along, scooped Blue up and flung him right in the middle of a gaggle of kites. He had never seen so many, all in one place. So many colours, he thought in amazement. There were dozens of them streaking through the sky. They took turns swooping by, 
wildly spinning him about. I love playing with kites, he thought. Blue was having the time of his life, but soon found it was time to go once again. Down, down, down he went. Off in the distance he saw what looked like a massive stone maze. It seemed to snake along forever, and he was drifting straight towards it. Gently floating along a series of freeways and overpasses, Blue was flabbergasted. He had never seen such a sight. Even the biggest roller coaster from home could not compare. The air became thick with smog. Dotting alongside massive stone pillars, he found it difficult to see. Cars zoomed by endlessly. Blue thought they looked much like the go-karts back home, only going much faster. In fact, it seemed the closer he got, the faster they got. And just as Blue was becoming quite worried, a big truck drove past and sent him off in a big cloud of smoke. He was safe, for now. But dark, ominous clouds rolled overhead. That same old terrible wind was picking up again, and poor little Blue was now being propelled so fast he couldn't see a single solitary thing. Suddenly, he came crashing to a halt. Blue was now stuck in a tree. Just in the nick of time, he thought. He quickly discovered he was not alone. Next to him was a little pink balloon, just about the same size. She had been stuck there for quite some time, and she was in a terrible mood. We'll call her Pinky. Neither balloon wanted to be stuck in a tree, nor did they enjoy clashing against one another. Finding themselves caught in the middle of a dreadful thunderstorm, it's safe to say they were two very unhappy balloons. The storm raged on and on and on, and they had nothing to do but grow angry with each other. Frustration soon turned to fear as bolts of lightning flashed across the sky. They began to feel grateful for not being alone in such a terrible ordeal. Finally, the storm eased off and turned into a soft, falling rain. It was such a relief for our two little balloons, and soon they fell fast asleep. Pinky and Blue awoke early the next morning, just as the sun was coming up over the hills. How lovely, they both thought. For the first time, they truly noticed each other and how the light set off the other's colour. After all their ordeals, I think it's safe to say that they were now becoming the best of friends. We should take note. It was, at this very moment, Pinky's one and only dream come true. She found a true friend. Once more came that troublesome wind. When will this horrible wind leave me alone? Blue fretted. It slammed against the tree and the two balloons swayed back and forth wildly with the branches. They both feared another storm. Not wanting to lose his newfound friend, Blue flung his string out towards Pinky, trying desperately to hang on. He felt their strings wrap tight together. At this time, the wind did something quite unexpected. A huge gust sent them both flying from the tree and into the air. The wind set them free. Maybe the wind isn't so bad after all, Blue pondered. Soon it was calm, and the wind carried them gently across the countryside. Holding onto each other tight, they caught sight of something coming over the hilltops. Something remarkable. They saw balloons. Thousands of balloons in every size, shape and colour. How beautiful, they both thought. Blue knew this place. He had seen it in his dream. The wind had taken them to the great balloon city. Here in this place, Pinky and Blue would find many great adventures together and remained the very best of friends. 
so it goes to show. You can never go wrong with a good balloon story. And dreams can come true if you let the wind take you there. The end. Good night.